Welcome to My Two Cents with Keith Beggs from Steadfast Wealth Strategies. In this podcast, we show high-level executives and business owners why comprehensive financial planning and executive bonus structures don't have to be too good to be true. Keith draws on his experience in realistic financial planning, and expert guests share his two cents about academically-based financial planning that you have to hear to believe. Now, on to the show. The new year is not far away, and that may spark some thoughts of resolutions. Tops for many people is getting into better physical shape and creating a healthier lifestyle, including exercise. Time constraints and general procrastination, though, can make that promise to yourself difficult to stick to, and COVID hasn't helped. In this episode of his podcast, My Two Cents, Keith Beggs of Steadfast Wealth Strategies tackles that issue with his guest, Bryce Morris. Bryce is the head of team training for Lifetime Fitness. Keith, does this mean that maybe you are making plans for a healthier you? (laughs) I mean, (laughs) always trying to make plans. I'm good at making plans for a healthier me, but like most people, uh, you know, I often fall short. Um, I'll give Bryce a little more. Yeah, right. (laughs) I'll do. Uh, I'll give Bryce a little more credit. He's their head of team training. He runs their alpha training program. And his biggest claim to fame is he did get me in shape for my wedding. So uh, that was no small feat. So I've known Bryce for a while. He's been a, a great friend and a, and a great partner uh, when it comes to these things. And so, um, as you mentioned, Patrice, uh, most New Year's resolutions revolve around health. That's probably the number one. I think gym memberships, um, I think 90% or something of them are signed up in January. So this is something a lot of people are concerned about. And so I wanted to give um, our listeners kind of a head start and, uh, and some secret sauces maybe that Bryce can give them to, uh, to make this easier for them. So uh, Bryce, I kind of tasked you with helping us give us some ideas for people to kind of crush their 2021 goals or to really hit them out of the park this year. So let's walk through a couple of things that you think people can do um, to help them be a healthier them in 2021. Hey, um, I appreciate this, by the way, Keith. I uh, appreciate being here and being able to be on this platform. But uh, uh, really kind of the first one, I got a couple of three, like three options. The first one I was going to look into really is the, this kind of a morning routine. You know, don't hit the snooze button. You know, I would say that's kind of the first thing is, you know, you want to win the morning, start the day off, you know, by not hitting that snooze. But I know I know a lot of times we like to get in and it's cold and things like that. We want to snuggle up and, you know, try to get as many extra hours or many minutes as we can into the day. But uh, I kind of look at it as more of a mindset as to where, you know, you know, you want to have that mindset to where you want to win the morning, you win the day. You know, having that be the very first thing you do is not procrastinate. So that's kind of right. how I look at as the first thing is, you know, win the morning, win the day, don't hit that snooze button. And, and what do they say? It's, it takes 21 days to create a habit or something, right, Bryce? Where if you do something two or three weeks in a row, you'll start creating that habit. So if you can get through January with this, it kind of gets easier and easier down the line. Would you, would you say that's a, that's true? No, I, you found that no, I, I would agree with that. You know, I think it's, it's relative to the individual as well, as far as the days, you know, some everybody habits kind of kick in at certain times, but definitely I would say, you know, you start doing something consistently like that, you know, you're going to generate that habit and it's going to become a routine, which is something I'll lead into later on as well. All right. So are you suggesting people work out in the morning or are you, or the, you know, or just kind of that they get up in the morning and get their day started uh, uh, when they re- want to? I wouldn't necessarily say working out. This is more ju- really just the mindset of really talking about your goals and things like that, because whatever your goal is, you got to wake up to go do it first. So it's really more about that mindset. Hey, hey. I can't think the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is, uh, oh, I got to hit the snooze and I've already lost some of that day. That's kind of how I think about it is that, you know, if that's whether you're getting up to go to a workout or get up going to work or getting up to go meet somebody or whatever that is, kind of like that's the mindset you want to put your, which put yourself in, in the frame of mind. Okay. Yeah, man. No, I get it. All right. Well, okay. So what else would you tell them would be a, would be something that they need to focus on um, as they're trying to move forward here with their health? Uh, really next, I'll say just move, move, you know, whether times if you're not doing anything right now, if you've been sedentary, the biggest thing right now is, you know, finding a routine to get up in the morning and move. You know, if you are doing something as as in a routine, you know, I always say creating that blood flow in the morning, whether it be stretching, exercising, or, you know, walking, walking a dog or something like that, just creating that blood flow first in the morning. Definitely recommend that then doing that first, because that just kind of reshapes your focus, your memory you know, your problem solving skills, things like that in that morning, morning time frame. So I know that sometimes some people like to, you know, do their workout later in the day or 
things like that. But I always talk about, you know, movement in the morning is always a health and sufficient. So even if you can't just work out, just doing something to get your blood flowing, you know, that's what I always recommend as far as goal oriented, goal oriented and using the movement aspect and reshaping your mind that way. So yeah, if you got five or 10 minutes to do some stretching, get some blood flow, kind of get yourself loosened up, give your time to get your mind going and then jumpstart your day. That'll really help you out. Now, a lot of people, Bryce, they'll set really lofty goals up front, right? And then they, they um, one of the things I've always known about goals is you got to make them attainable, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, so so for, for, for some clients maybe that, that haven't worked out in a long time um, or, or are trying to inch back into this, what are some, you know, is, is walking, I think you mentioned walking. I mean, how much walking does someone need to do to kind of to get enough or to, to get their blood flow for that to start taking hold for them or to, to be beneficial? Uh, I mean, it's all relative to the individual. I mean, because depending on that person's work capacity, it may only take a little bit for them to get started back into that workout routine. But I mean, walking is always something I would say starting with first and then, you know, walking leads into jogging can possibly lead into running if that's something that they're able to do structurally for yeah. their body stature. You know, that That's the, the, the sense in the route I would take, you know, when it just, like I said, getting movement and then starting with something that's going to be not over the top that you just can't perform and can't do. Like you want to start slowly and then work up your work capacity. Like each week, each day should do something a little bit more to pick it up. And then you start adding in other forms of fitness and things like that into your, into your, uh, your toolbox. Gotcha. And, and a lot of people wear like the, the eye watches anymore where they have, uh, I can't remember the other names on, but the, you know, the step, step counters. counters yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, what is the number yeah. of, what is the number of steps that someone might be, you know, that they should be like a target maybe just to give them a goal so, or something to look at? So typically, you know, I would say typically about that, the eight to 12,000 mark, 10 to 12,000, I would say steps a day. That, that's probably about three miles, you know, um, on an average, you should probably shoot for that. That's a general uh, area you want to try to push for as far as tracking, especially um, if you have a fitness app or something like that, or if you're using something to, to track your steps with, that's something I would definitely recommend when, when um, just getting your body movement and utilizing that as a as a baseline of fitness because that will lead into other things because it shows you're moving around. You're not just being sedentary and sticking, sitting on your butt and not doing anything. So I use that actually a lot. I love to look at my watch and see how many steps I average a day. I try to get about 15 to 17,000 steps a day on average for myself. Yeah, no, that's great. And like I said, a lot of I know my, my mom wanted one for Christmas, so I know a lot of people are, you know, if they don't have them. Um, but that's something that's easy to look at and easy to track. If you're not getting into the gym maybe every day or with your schedule, it's hard to get in the gym every day. What you're saying is if we can do, if they can get 10 to 12,000 steps a day, that will help build and help them throughout this process. Yeah. It, Cause it's just like, um, like I said, like it's, it's, it's that mindset thing where, okay, if I got to, if I get these numbers, then by doing that, it's going to naturally make me do more eventually. Okay, man, I've been getting 10,000 steps in for the past two, three days, man, let me try to see if I can go 12,000. Now it's just like you're setting those markers on yourselves and you're putting intention to what you're doing. So well, okay, now you're going to keep tracking it and you're going to keep looking at it to where now it's like a repetitive thing. If I don't have my watch, if I don't track my steps, now I feel like I didn't do anything. So that's right. a that's a good marker to start with from there because then that will lead to other things when in the fitness, whether it be trying to come more effective for a workout, get into a workout routine, or you know, find a workout partner, things like that. Cause now you're building that consistency and you're getting that routine. And you're starting to have that, um, that, that, that you start to generate that same mental mindset to keep moving. Right. I know, I know when my watch, uh, when it says I hit my calorie mark for the day and it kind of goes off, right. You get that alert when you hit your goals. Um, I know, I know, yep. I know it makes me happy to know I've hit my goal. So uh, I think people, you know, so that's, 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 we're all self gratifying, right. That's self gratification. Like we're all, you know, creatures of, of we want that that gratification somehow, and I love how they they definitely done a great job with connecting the watches to see like okay, I got a I got a badge today. Oh yeah, I, I feel great. You know, so yeah. <laughs> it makes you feel some type of way. <laughs> it does, man. Okay, so we, yeah. if we're working out. Um, you know, we, we want to be consistent with it. We want to get a routine. If you're not able to get in the gym every day, watch your steps. Make sure you're trying to get like you know, we'll just say ten thousand to twelve thousand on that. But now now it's it's to me it's the tougher one, right? And that's diet. Right. So diets, diets, the one that I, I, you asked my wife, I start a new diet about every two weeks. Right. And they last about two days. <laughs> so I have trouble with the consistency on this, but give us some simple diet tips or some ideas uh, for people or some, maybe some things they need to be watching with their diet. So what do you got there? Uh, I mean, we can go a big rabbit hole with this, but really I would say, you know, a lot of times, you know, you know, what you're eating good things, you know, eating bad things. Some people have a good 
uh, idea and recognize that it's really just cutting out is, is moderation, you know, cutting out slowly. Some people can go cold turkey, some people can't, but it's like, you know, you have that certain food that you just know you have to have, you know, you love it, but you eat it every single day, but you know that it's not probably going to make you feel better. Maybe cut it down to maybe every other day. So which eventually you'll start to dwindling down, you know, and not having setting yourself up for so much failure down the line where you just, you just feeding yourself the same thing over and over again, maybe regress it, maybe go every other day. You know, I, I love certain types of candies. If you like some type of candies, maybe, okay, regress that to not every day, bring it back maybe every other day. And then you'll start with that first and then you start creating the mindset. Okay, then I can gradually reduce it. So some people work differently. Everybody works. Some people can go cold turkey and just cut it out and yeah. buy it. It's, it's very, very general and it's very broad to, to when it comes to, you know, ha- ways to, to trick your mind and things like that. Because, you know, you can just don't buy it at the store. Yeah. Don't go to the grocery When you go to the grocery store, don't buy it. Sight out of mind. You mm-hmm. know, some people have those cravings. If you know you're a big, big craver or salt or sugar craver, then maybe find other substitutions for those cravings. You know, if I crave a lot of sugar, then, okay, maybe have my substitute be more fruits. You know, if I crave a lot of saltier yeah. foods, maybe I have some of my saltier foods be more natural, maybe some more nuts and things like that. So it's like finding other alternatives as well so you can still get the things you want to get and feel gratified, but you're not putting so much damage and harm to yourself right. with some of that processed unnatural foods that you know you're not feeling great with the next few days after you eat it. For sure. And so you mentioned sugar. So my wife's diabetic, so I've had to start watching sugar um, through her, right? Because as a diabetic, we really have to pay attention to sugar. But I think that's one that people uh, maybe aren't aware of how much they're getting or what's a right amount on, on that. So can you elaborate a little bit more on maybe some targets for sugar? So I'll say this. Sugar is poison. All right. And, and it's, it's sad to say that, you know, a lot of things that in our in our society as far as foods and things that we eat, you know, it's filled with sugar. And that's the things that typically people draw to because it's very addicting. Mm-hmm. But uh, typically I, w- I would say really honestly, you know, watch the sugars and try to keep it under about a 20 to 25 grams a day per day. And and if you're going to do sugar, try to be as natural and whole as possible. So I mean like getting fresh sugars from I mean, sugar, natural sugar from fruits, you know, using honey, you know, things like that as your, um, natural monk fruit, things like that as your substitutes than eating raw white table sugar. Gotcha. You know, that's the kind of the, what I'm talking about is to stay away from those because if you look into those nutrition labels and, they, and you look back there, you know, they add a lot, a lot of sugar. If you really just think back into it, like each gram or so of sugar in there, I think it's like what, I've got the exact number. I want to say a tablespoon, uh, for every four grams of sugar on the back of the label, like one tablespoon of sugar or something like that. Okay. So like, you know, you you go look on the back of some of those sugar drink, those drinks, it's saying like 10 grams of sugar. So I'm like, if you put that in reality, every four grams of the tablespoon of sugar, like that's a lot of sugar. Right. You know, it's like, so it's like having that, it's kind of having that intention, that mindset to like understand, okay, reading labels and then understanding how sugar makes you feel and things like that. So I, I know I can talk a rant about this all day about the sugar <laughs> stuff, but... <laughs> I know, right before the holidays too, we're gonna to put some. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, know, right? They're probably they're gonna hate him. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, sometimes the truth hurts, right? That's okay. So, um, hey, l- lastly, those are those are great, man. We've talked about make sure you're at least getting ten thousand steps in a day. Um, on the health side, um, the one main thing it sounds like you're saying is just, it, the, the the biggest change you can make, probably the healthiest change, is just really to watch sugar. Obviously, fruits and vegetables, those things are all important. I'm not saying that at all. But watching sugar can make a big difference. And then something that you've worked with me a lot on um, were just really brought to my attention was how important sleep is with these tasks and with wanting to re- uh, attain your goals with health. Um, I think a lot of times we're a very busy society, um, you know, and everything that's going on. There's something that can always be grabbing our attentions with our phones and things. But um, you made it a point with me to really focus on sleep. And I want you to, to talk about that a little bit, why that's so important and maybe some ideas around that. Well, first of all, I mean, that's the one thing that we all need and must do, right? And it's kind of like, and that's the biggest challenge that we have is that's the one thing we know we do the most, but it's kind of like there's a, a not a lot of understanding about it as well. You know, it's like, you know, you should think if you don't, if you don't work hard enough, you know, you don't sleep, like, what's the word I'm saying? If, you, if, you, if you're really working, you don't sleep, that mindset, like, no, that's not necessarily how you want to think about it. It's like, 
understanding how to prioritize your sleep and understand how important it is. If I'm not sleeping adequately enough and how much that increases cortisol levels and stress levels and how much that just puts so much more weight on you that this, this, this weighs and bunkers you down. And so honestly, I feel like the sleep is the biggest one because if you're not letting your body naturally recover and things like that and letting your body get to that deep REM sleep and those deep uh, deep sleep so your body actually takes time to repair and get in your mind, your focus, everything like so it's like, it kind of gets thrown on the back burner a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, and I think uh, putting more intention to that is very important. And uh, I think that's something that we miss out on a lot of is, the, is that we try to do everything we can in the day and we don't really get an opportunity to let our body regress and digress. I'm sorry, digress a little bit and, and recover. Yeah, for sure. And if people say they have trouble sleeping, is there like any, um, vitamins or anything that could that could help them naturally i mean i don't want them to take any, you know not, not the prescription stuff but is there natural um remedies for help to help people sleep uh i will always say first you know i hear people say issues with sleep and I always ask like what are you typically doing first before you go to sleep you know a lot of times it's the routine you know are you you know are you eating right before you go to bed are you having all these distractions and phones in front of you all that you know so i'll kind of go that route first yeah and then seeing what their routines are and then it goes to okay, all right. What are we doing? What are we doing for our supplementation internally? Are we, you know, our our electrolyte balance is off a little bit. You know, I, I like to look in the calcium magnesium a little bit first. You know, because your body needs that to help your body relax. Magnesium magnesium buffers, buffers your blood, helps uh, stretch and shortening of your muscles, and so that helps relax you as well. And so adding those things in can help. And then uh, melatonin, your body naturally makes melatonin, so. Cortisol and melatonin are still your friends. A lot of times you hear cortisol, people they think it's a bad thing. Right. You know, cortisol wakes you up in the morning, right? Cortisol would get you up. That's kind of what wakes you up. And the melatonin will help put you down to sleep a little bit at the nighttime. That's what puts you back down. And so your cortisol levels should be really low when you're sleeping. And then your melatonin levels will be higher. And then as they, they flip and as your cortisol, as you wake up, your cortisol level picks up a little bit that wakes you up. And they kind of work ebb and flow with one another. And so a lot of times if that's not adequate enough and, you're, and, you're, and your body's not making enough of it, you know, that could cause you not to get the sleep that you want and it causes you to be up, you know, kind of looking around. And so that's something I always try to get them in because your body naturally makes that. Yeah. And so I always stress the, the melatonin and things like that and understanding how cortisol works because if you're always up, 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 that means there's something going on. We may need to get some type of assessment, blood work done. But um, I start with those things first and then water is another big one. Okay. You know, water is the biggest one. You know, just make sure you got plenty of water, so your you know, your muscles made seventy percent water. And if they're not, if they're always at a point where you, you're dehydrated, your balances are all off. You know, that could cause you know some things with your sleep too as well. So you know, you'd be cramping, wake up in the middle of the night and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So I mean, I always suggest those little small things like that. You know, I never recommend you know taking a big old night pack or Z Z Quill or Night right. Quill all that stuff and, and putting all the suppressants to your body, which you know, slows your system up and it makes you all lethargic, things like that. Let's look into more of a natural route. Right. Because your body is a very, very smart machine and it's very, very sensitive as well. And so you want to give it, give it the right fuel and the right things that's going to help it run efficiently. And I think um, a lot of times we go to the to the easy route to the prescribed medication to try to exactly. help our sleep. And I think we should go to the other route first, the natural route, then go to the other route next. So that natural route is the calcium, the magnesium, maybe a little melatonin, but then watching your water and electrolytes, making sure you're getting fluids and things like that throughout the day. Um, that'll help you. Right, stretching, even... you, know, you know, maybe breathing before, like going through some little techniques, things maybe, you know, I, some people, you know, maybe breathe before you go to bed, some stretching techniques, just a little yoga, like, or you know, some lavender baths, you know, all those little things you can start incorporating first before we just start and popping those pills right no doubt well hey bryce man these have been great i think uh i think these are things that people can easily latch on to and get started if uh if someone wanted to find out more about your services or what you do how do they find you how do they find bryce morris out there in the world hey well you can go visit my website it's called bemofit.biz and i have instagram as well at bemofit and uh through facebook as well definitely you know I, uh, my, my platform is probably more more social media but Definitely reach out through bmofit.biz. I have a, a, a training app as well. Anybody ever interested in a little training online, I, I can utilize that too. And then we have a, I have a program through Lifetime. They can come visit me there and knock out some classes and get some of the, into the best shape of your life. Excellent. Well, hey guys, I will, uh, I have firsthand experience with, with Bryce and he has been, I mean, nothing but great to me and, and my family and helping us to get in shape. So that's at B-M-O-F-I-T dot B-I-Z. Correct, Bryce? 
correct. So correct. Excellent. Well, if you have any questions for me, as always, I'm at Keith at steadfastws.com. You can find us online at steadfastws.com. And you can reach me at 832 506 9034. Let's have a great 2021. Let's crush our financial goals. Let's crush our health goals. And let's make it our best year ever. Thanks, guys. Great takeaway. Great takeaways, guys. Don't hit the snooze button, but get enough sleep. Moderation in your diet. Watch the sugar and make your goals reasonable, everybody. Bryce Morris, head of team training for Lifetime Fitness. And of course, Keith Beggs of Steadfast Wealth Strategies. And of course, Keith Beggs of Steadfast Wealth Strategies. Make sure you know when Keith has new episodes ready of his podcast, My Two Cents. All you have to do is subscribe with the subscribe button on this page. And of course, you can share with the share button. Thank you for listening to My Two Cents with Keith Beggs. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. All securities discussed are offered and provided through Steadfast Financial Planning, LLC. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Steadfast Wealth Strategies. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor and or qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. This podcast is not intended to provide specific investment, financial planning, tax, or legal advice. It is intended for educational purposes only. Please consult your tax advisor, financial advisor, or legal professional for specific advice on your specific situation.